Well, hey everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how I've learned to control a Pod HD 500 uh, with Ableton uh, through MIDI. So uh, I know there's a lot of videos out there to show you how to control Ableton with a Pod. This is actually the reverse: how to change sounds and change patches and everything um, on your Pod uh, with Ableton. Uh, now this wouldn't just apply to a pod, this should apply to about any multi-effects unit or if um, you use like a MIDI mixer and you know put all your you know, pedals in line, things like that, uh, it should, um, it should uh, apply to that as well. I haven't actually done that, but since it's MIDI, uh, the concepts should be the same. Now the reason I do this, I'm a worship leader at a church and um, a lot of the times I'm playing electric guitar. So what this does is it frees me up to not have to look down at the board and you know stomp on patches. Um, now the only thing with it is you have to make sure you do your songs the same way. So I, there are some services where I wouldn't use this function because you know we we will do a little more flowing in the spirit things like that, and uh, and so it, it wouldn't be helpful to do this. But uh, for the but for most time like maybe a Christmas program or Easter or even a lot of our weekend services things are remain pretty similar. So, uh, I've used this so I can concentrate on just, you know, focusing on uh, worship and praise. Uh, this would also just apply to, uh, you know, a show as well, any kind of show, where you, the guitarist just wants to sort of focus outward with the audience or the, you know, congregation, whatever you got going on there. So, so anyway, here, enough talking. Here's how to do it. Um, so, I've got a Ableton file for one of our songs we do called Already One. It's from Elevation. And um, what I'm going to do is show you, show you basically how I create this. Uh, I've got all, we're in uh, the arrangement view going horizontally. All our audio tracks are right here. What I'm going to do, is, first of all, is create some MIDI tracks. So I go to, um, I hit, first of all, I click down here. And I click Shift Command T and it creates a MIDI track. This first MIDI track is going to be for programming changes, making sure that, that uh, at the beginning of the song I'm on the right patch. So I'm going to call that program change. And then with this, I need to make sure in all our outputs, I need to make sure the MIDI output is set to, in this case, USB MIDI. Normally during a, our services, I'd be we'd be going into the interface as like a Focusrite uh, Sapphire, and that's what I would use. I would plug into that. But for these purposes, I'm just USB MIDI. So that's very important um, that you have that there. So now for program changes, what I'm going to do is just to create a little MIDI clip. What I do is highlight like a measure, and I do Shift Command M as in MIDI, and uh, right here that is your MIDI clip. And this is what this basically is going to tell the pod to go to a certain patch. So I've got to figure out which patch it is. Here's my uh, here's my pod right here, and this is the sound that I've got. It's 05A. I already counted that earlier. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, I'm sorry, 30, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 17. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Okay, so number 17 is already one. So that. If I go back to live, that's what I want to put here in the program change under program. So I just go, I'm just going to type it in, hit enter, 17. So now whenever this song starts, it's going to go to um, this particular patch change. And uh, so that, that, that covers that. Now, uh, the little more complex is the um, continuous controller changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got on my on my pod here. If you go to our controllers here, I've got in foot switch one that controls uh, the little um, a bass octave that kicks in at the very end of the solo, and then I've got foot switch three, which toggles between two different delays. I've got like a, a, a just a delay with just a little bit of a level on it, and then one that's a little more heavier delay for like the solo and things like that. So so what I want to do is have one track to turn on and off foot switch one and another track in Ableton to turn on and off foot switch three. So you have to make sure you've got your uh, pod or whatever uh, MIDI thing you've got. You've got to make sure that's set up the way you want it to do. And what this does is just basically, ha it's like having somebody standing on your board and 
turning on and off certain switches. So let's go back to Ableton. So I'm going to create a MIDI track, Shift Command T for foot switch one. Foot switch one. And also make sure your output is set to MIDI. I'm also going to create another um, Shift Command T, another uh, MIDI track for foot switch three. And that is going to be to toggle between the two different delays. That Switch that to MIDI. So now what I'm going to do is give a bird's eye view of the song real quick. And what I'm going to do is for each of these MIDI tracks here, the, for the continuous controller, I'm going to make a, <clears throat> a MIDI clip that extends the length of the song. Shift-Command-M. Here's another one. shift command M. All right. So here we got a MIDI clip for foot switch one, MIDI clip for foot switch three. Okay, so we go to foot switch one. First of all, what you want to do is um, click on this little E until this opens up for your continuous controller messages. So you want to assign the continuous controller number that would turn on and off foot switch one. So that, what that means, you usually have to go back to your manual, uh, whatever you use. So I've got um, have nav the uh, pod HD 500 manual up and um, I see right here in the notes that, that uh, number 51 toggles foot switch one on and off 53 toggles at foot switch three on and off so there we go there's our answer for that go back to live what you want to do is go to here we got the clip for foot switch one there's the information here click under maybe can it's got MIDI control, click on there, and then find 51. Same thing for here. Click on there, and for foot switch three, it's 53. <clears throat> so, now they're assigned for foot switch one, foot switch three. Our MIDI controller, continuous controller numbers are assigned, the other thing. So now, what we gotta do is tell um, at which point in the song you want to turn on and off certain things. Okay, so for begin with, um, here's the clip for um, foot switch one, for, again for the uh, bass octave that I want to add at the end of the solo. So what I did here is just sort of zoom in on the measures a bit. And what I'm going to do here to turn off, I'm going to create certain points to um, turn on and off the, uh, the foot switch. So let's zoom in a bit. I'm going to find the um, Find the instrumental, and what I want to do is right here in the last two measures. That's where I want the uh, the um, uh, bass octave or octave octave effect to kick in. So I'm gonna click right here a couple measures before. I will play it while it's playing. I'll click on I'll click on the clip, and and also on the follow button, and then we can find out where we need to make the changes in the clip. So here we go. I'm going to play it, click the clip, click the follow, there it was right there. So right here is where I want it to turn on. So what I do is I create two points, one at the very bottom for zero, and then another click which I move all the way up for 127. Because for this one, for this kind of MIDI, MIDI controller change, you just want it uh, all the way up or all the way down. So I just only want that to run like two measures, maybe a third measure just to go into the pre-chorus. So it just kind of hangs over a little bit. So right there, I set a point and then it turns off. So now if I um, turn this on here and we play it, <clears throat> you should see everything turn on here. Watch this right here. And here it turns Free on. Chorus. Right One, there. two, three, four. And it turns off. So there you go. All automated right there. So uh, that's basically what's going to happen. Uh, now then the other thing is for like my delay. Uh, I want that one um, to 
I've got two different delays. One's a lighter delay, one's a heavy delay. I want that heavy delay to kick in right at the beginning of the solo. So I will click on a couple measures before. Let's go to the clip. Let's zoom in a little bit better so it's easy to see. Here we go. I'm going to play it. So this is the point where I want it to kick in with extra delay at the instrumental. I play it. Click on the clip so I can see it. Click the follow key. Instrumental. One, two, three, four. Okay, so right here around measure 79. That's where I want it to turn on. So I create my two points from 0 all the way up to 127. And I'm just going to keep it with heavy delay all the way through the rest of the song. So there you go. That's how I do it now. So now when um, when you get to this point, instrumental one, two, three, four. The delay kicks in. The right delay kicks in. And if I needed it to turn off, I could do that too. So that's basically how you do it. I hope that makes sense. And um, if you know of any other ways to do this, I know there's some third-party programs that, from what I understand as well, that can do this as well. But um, this is just how I've learned to do it without a third-party program. And uh, again, it worked pretty well. As you can see, it takes a little homework, takes a little pre-planning, but um, it, it does free me up quite a bit. So hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.